it's root beer season and yet I have a pineapple right here because I'm going to be making a tapache root beer. And you might think that's sacrilege. You might think they have nothing to do with each other and they really don't. But the recipe I found for root beer called for it to be fermented and tapache is a pretty quick ferment. So I'm just gonna see if the flavors work together. I'm gonna show you how to make it. If you don't have the foraged ingredients, that's fine. I'm gonna give you some substitutions. If you do have the foraged ingredients, then we'll see what happens. You know the drill? You gotta cut up the pineapple. And use organic if you can, because we're gonna be using the peel. This is where organic comes in. You can give it a light wash. Don't use any kind of soap. Don't use hot water and stuff your container with the peels. Next, we're gonna add some foraged ingredients. This is spice bush, and if you don't have spice bush, you can try nutmeg. Um, I often make this with cinnamon. Um, any really good smelling spice, and the stems of a spice bush smell absolutely amazing. I have some sarsaparilla um, stems, and it also has a really good smell. This is kind of where the root beeriness is gonna come from, hopefully. If you don't have access to sarsaparilla, you can do two different things. You can get a tincture and kind of flavor it after the fact, or you can find somewhere to buy it online. I'm gonna add a little bit more spice bush, bush berries. This is also called um, Appalachian nutmeg, so nutmeg would work. And then I'm also gonna throw in some rose hips. Now, my rose hips are extremely small because this is from a very small variety of rose, but um, so yours might not look like this. Dumping it in, everyone needs the extra vitamin C this time of year. You're gonna need four and a half cups of water and a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. And I like to put the brown sugar in the water and give it a really good stir. It's just easier to get it all dissolved that way. This right now by itself smells amazing, but in a few days, the fermentation process will break down those flavors even more. And it will be, hopefully, a delicious root beer. Anything that's above the waterline might have a tendency to mold, but if you stir it daily, maybe a couple of times a day, you're not gonna have that problem. And then keep it covered for three days before straining it and enjoying it chilled.